Hey guys, I'm Rabbit, and we are here today with Pillars of Eternity. Um, I don't know if you guys are into these kinds of games, but um, this one is sort of like Baldur's Gate and uh, a lot of other D&D &D games like that. I know um, from looking at it and from seeing others play it, it um, kind of reminds me also of um, Neverwinter Nights by Blizzard, if you haven't played that. Um, it's probably not at all like that, but um, a lot of the D&D &D games go off of uh, dice rolls and stuff like that. And I know for sure Neverwinter Nights did, and I was really a fan of that series, and as well as the Baldur Gate series. So I'm probably going to be a huge fan of this game too. It looks really good, and from what I hear, it's got incredibly positive reviews from just about everybody that's played it, so I figure I'll start a, uh, a series on it, and what I will try to do is uh, keep the episodes about, let me set a timer here, probably about 30 minutes in length or so, and um, if you guys don't like it or if I don't get a lot of views on it I'll probably just continue playing it off screen and I'm going into this game totally blind just so you're aware um, I don't know much about it I've tried not to watch too many videos on it because I don't I didn't want to spoil the story so I may fumble on the key binds and stuff a little bit until I get used to it and we may very well die quite a bit but uh Hopefully you guys actually enjoy this series. If not, um, well, I will, nonetheless. So let's go ahead, start a new game. Um, yeah, I've actually done this, so I'll probably go to normal for now. Only one save file's kept for the entire playthrough. Wow. Well, so this is like a... <laughs> This is basically a, uh, yeah, permadeath is what that was. So I'm going to go ahead and start the timer now. And I won't be talking over the uh, um, voice acting or anything. I know there's some parts in there that have it, so here we go. Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night, their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, so we jump right into character creation. Um, a woman's role in Eora is largely dependent on where she is from. In the Adir Empire, Valian Republics, and Direwood, and the Direwood, women occupy many domestic, educational, and organizational roles. They're primary hunters, soldiers, and leaders of the tribes in Nasatek. In Ayr, Glanfath, and a middle. Women and men have more fluid social roles. In all societies, there are exceptions to the rule, and women can be found in a wide variety of situations and professions. Now, I know I'm butchering the names, <laughs> but uh, but I'm sure they'll correct me later on in the story or something when these are mentioned. Merchantile power, former and former colony of a large, more ancient nation, Old Valia. The Republic slide to the south of Direwood and Irglan Glanfath 
and are ruled by a duke elected by Council Gly Asegia, I'm assuming. A council of 14 dukes included its five most prominent, the Duke's Bills. So it's just a little lore. Now, I'm unsure. Um, may go with female, actually, just for this playthrough. Just to see what it's like. And I'm not sure on race just yet. I know these guys are like an aquatic race. Largest of the kith races and are commonly found near oceans. They're not truly aquatic. They have an affinity for water and many of their civilizations, such as Rotai, are based on naval dominance. They're known for their unparalleled strength. I'm actually unsure of what class I want as well. Oh my god, look at this guy. Orleans are the smallest. <laughs> so if you hover over, it looks like they uh, tell you. Resolve reflects characters, internal drive, determination, fearlessness, and the emotional intensity they can project to others. It can be useful for mental intimidation, leadership, and convincing performances. In combat, it helps characters maintain concentration and contributes to the will and deflection bonuses. Defenses. <laughs> Perception represents a character's senses as well as their instinctive ability to pick up on details. In interactions, it can be used to catch someone in a lie, to make an observant comment about their appearance, or to notice something happening in the background. In combat, it contributes to the deflection and reflex defenses and grants a bonus to interrupt. Instead of fighter, uh, by all means, I'm not going to be um, min-maxing, just so you know, because, well, for one, I don't know the game's mechanics or anything yet, off the top of my head, and two, I really just want to get into the story, so... Um, I'm probably not going to go with fighter, to be honest. The resolve would be nice. What I may do... Now what's the difference between hearth? Hearth Orleans are often found as slaves in... Oops. Slaves in Red Karis, I'm thinking. And Valian Republics. One of the treaty terms between the Direwood and the people of Irglanfath was the li liberation of Orleans slaves. And while this has been honored, many hearth Orleans continue to live in their Direwood as indentured servants. Minor threat. When attacking any target that is also being targeted by a teammate, Hearth Orleans convert some of their hits into crits. Nice. So what about the wild? Wild Orleans are the original Orleans who lived in the deepest forests and jungles between the tropics. While they have been significantly separated from Hearth Orleans for a thousand years, a few genetic differences have appeared rapidly, most notably a lack of facial hair in the Hearth Orland branch. Wild Orleans are common in the deep reaches of Ire Glanfath. Unlike their Hearth or Orland brethren, they are often seen in Direwood, Red Ceres, or Valen Republics. Defiant Resolve. After being subjected to a will attack, Wild Orleans typically gain a bonus to all defenses. Interesting. I'm probably going to go with Hearth. We'll go with next. Um, I'm pretty sure I want to go with Channer, to be honest. Wow, look at that. That's huge. It's like bigger than she is. That's hilarious. In every culture across Eora, there are Channers. Many historians consider Channers to be the most ancient workers of magic. Their hollowed phrases stirring the collective memory of wayward souls around them, compelling them to generate magical effects in a kind of reenactment. In some societies, channers form organized groups of storytellers and researchers, but in most parts of the world, they're just a time honor part of local traditions. Basically, I'm pretty sure these are bards. Starting abilities, phrases, chants. All channers can continuously speak chants made up of magical phrases. Phrases produce passive effects and help build a channer's power until they can use an invocation. Invocations, powerful magic effects that channers can create after they have spoken a required number of phrases through their chants. Yeah. Um, 
Long-term damage only gained through rest and certain talents. Endurance represents character's short-term survivability. Damage that is not absorbed by character's damage reduction goes straight to their endurance and health. So their endurance and health is kind of low. So it'd almost be best to give them a bow, maybe. Deflection is high and their accuracy is average. Hmm, interesting. It's okay. I'm probably sure. I think I'm going to do this. All chanters can continuously speak chants made of magic phrases. Phrases produce passive effects and help build a chanter's power until they can use an invocation. So I'm assuming that these are, yeah, phrases. The increases movement rate and reflex of all allies. Reflex defense allows characters to dodge out of the way of physically harmful AoE attacks. Hmm. I think this will help out a lot. Reduces concentration of enemies in area effect. Trains a portion of endurance from all enemies in area effect. Hmm. This seems, um, this seems like it's going to be, like, helpful. And Molden's allies in the Arab effect, giving bonuses to fortitude and will, so these are resistances. But I think... I think... It may be better to be able to drain a portion of endurance. Minus 4.1 endurance over 6 seconds. Duration is 4 seconds. It lingers for 2. And what's this one? So 90% slashing damage, 90% piercing damage. 4... That's probably not 90%, but... That's what I always assume with decimals for six seconds. So yeah, I think I think that's gonna work. We'll go with that. And our invocation calls beyond the shroud and summons a phantom to fight for the party. Requires three phrases chanted. We only have two, however. So I'm wondering if that means we have to cycle through them at least once and then start again. Probably. Reduces damage reduction. Of enemies in the area of effect. Summon so three skeletons to fight for the party. Interesting. Increases the slash shock damage resistance reductions for all allies. Creates a thunderous explosion that stuns and shoves enemies in the area of effect. Drains electrostatic energy from the environment to create three bolts of lightning, causing shock damage to any in their path. White worms cause a nearby downed enemy to explode, expelling three white grubs and crushing nearby enemies. Seems interesting, however. I wonder which would be better. A phantom or three skeletons? Let's go with three skeletons. Hmm. Phantom actually sounds pretty cool, though. Yeah, we'll go with the three skeletons and see how they do. And let's see here. Nice, it's got all this up here. So, constitution... Overall health and stamina, although it's not used much in interactions, it's sometimes checked to withstand pain or endure a physically taxing ordeal. Combat it affects maximum health, endurance, and contributes to fortitude. Recommended for Channer. 
Resolve reflex characters. Yeah, we already read this. Um, recommend for Chatter. So it looks like we have 12, which is really high. We have 15 points. So, intellect, highly recommended for Chainer. So we should probably increase this. And Constitution is also highly recommended for Chainer, so we'll increase this. And I'm pretty sure Resolve determines how long our... Um, I read it somewhere, but I can't remember where. Determines how long our um, chance linger, I want to think. Minus 3% damage in healing, minus 2 fortitude. What happens if we increase this? Okay, so we get uh, normal damage. That's okay. Action speed and reflex. Don't think we'll need any of this, to be honest. So we'll go ahead and increase this, increase this. Um, probably increase our resolve again, to be honest. Yeah, that looks fine to me. Alright, so... The Deer Empire is currently the largest, most powerful force in this part of the world. <laughs> Deadfire gives her a big ass uh, great sword. That's awesome. It's located to the northeast. So it explains a large... Exp Expanse of fertile savannas. Gives her sword and shield. Axe and shield. I think I actually want the uh, spear and shield, <laughs> to be honest. Um, it gives her one to might. She probably won't need it, but... I think the uh, spear and shield will help. I know the shield will help with deflection and... I think the spears actually give um, actually give some accuracy or so. So we'll have eleven might. It's not <laughs> it's not a, a lot, but it gives her a little more melee combat. So I think the living lands will be good. Predictable, yeah. So we'll go with that. And, let's see. What is survival? Allows a character to make better use of food and potion items they find. And this is taking up a huge chunk of our time, so... This episode may go on for maybe an hour. We'll see. Lore and survival. Labor, athletics, mechanics, lore and mechanics, stealth and survival, stealth and survival, athletics and lore, lore and mechanics. Hmm. Traveling, fighting, scrambling up fallen statues can take its toll. Athletic skill counters the effects of occurred fatigue, allowing characters to go further and fight longer before they suffer penalties. So what is survival? Make better use of food and potions items they find. Hmm. Well, I think, actually, we'll probably just go with Mercenary. It gives her, gives her one to lore. And there isn't one that gives more lore, so 
We may as well. So that's uh, that's the culture, Living Lands Mercenary. And now we can change the skin, which is awesome. Or can we change skin? Oh, this is uh, the colors. What am I doing? So we can make that black or blue. Okay, now I understand. So what color? I should probably just uh, cut this away, to be honest. But I love uh, character customization. It takes me forever to get things right. Hmm. Lots of interesting colors. We may just go with this, though. Skin. No, we definitely don't want that. <laughs> Actually, like that, so. Hair can be a little darker, maybe. That's fine. Actually, like that one. What kind of hair do we have? She looks so short and stubby. Nice little fro going on there. Actually, may go back and make her a male. Let's do that. Oh, wow. Look at this guy. <laughs> we'll go over to appearance. Hmm. Now I'm actually wondering what other options we could have here. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, let's still go with Orlin. And we'll go with female. We'll, we'll stick with the female for now. And I think that other hairstyle is actually going to be where it's at. Or not. I like that one. Definitely like, like that one. Okay. Yeah, this looks good. And we need a portrait. So we'll go back, because that looked like these. Interesting. Portraits, indeed. Those must be godlikes. Oh, this game is going to be so fun, I can tell. Which is a female, so we don't want one of those. We will go back and choose... Come on, where are you? I think this one will probably be fine. Ah, that one works. Yes, I've got this. <gasps> nice and slow. Well, follow me. <laughs> Quickly and quietly. Now I am leader of the group. <laughs> Quickly and quietly. Eh? I've got this. Take him down. Keeping quiet. I like that one. So enter a name. I'm probably just going to name her Kara. To be honest, I actually really like that name. And we'll begin. Gilded Veil. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is uh, probably keep this going on for about um, about 20 more minutes or so, I think. Well, no, we still got like 10 minutes, so this will be good. Kevin Master finishes addressing a group, his bushy red mustache and sagging jowls <laughs> quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods toward a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling 
types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path clear. Gilded Vale's less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rock, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here, carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case, you'll be dead in a day. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. Let's see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. Hmm. Sparful nods and slides the worn bow over his shoulder. Um, sure. Where would I find these berries? They grow on a bush that's common around here. Kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. Is it dangerous out here? About your business. Okay. And not if the weather holds up. Hmm. Okay. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. If you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the traveler, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy, armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. She needs to find some spring berries. Watch this, she doesn't drop dead. No promises. <laughs> what kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her, you're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. <laughs> Off of you, Aiden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. You heard the man. Interesting. Let's get going before you keel over. Welcome to Pillars of Eternity. This is your first visit to Yora. You may want to watch these windows to become familiar with the tools. Right. So basically, we can just click and drag where we want people to go. Pretty simple stuff. Anyone need supplies? I've got sundries for sale. Exploration is key in Pillars of Eternity as you make your way through Eastern Reach. Open an area map to see the parts of the map you've already been to and what's left to explore. It's a good idea, actually. So, basically... Okay. Just looking for a bush, pretty much. Let's check by those outcroppings. Ah, it's like a dead deer. Awesome. Ooh. First enemy. Defense. So basically, all of his attributes are unknown. Let's go into our. Um, skills. Where's our skill set? Go in the character. Maybe it's in here. Party personal. Hmm. How do we open our chant book? Is what I would like to know. We don't have, um... Hmm. Okay. We'll just go in and attack. Interesting. Pillars of Eternity combat uses pause real time. Yes, this we understand.
that uh, isn't what we wanted to do. All characters in the game, friend or foe, have primary de have four primary defenses against attacks. Deflection fortitude. Yeah, that's fine. So, I really hope it quits pausing eventually. Yeah. Slow mode active. Okay, so she was already chanting it like. We want to edit those chants. Can we edit the chants? Um, actually, looks like we don't have to. We can change them up. I'm actually wanting that one there, and that one there. There we go. So it seems as though the chants are automatic, and this will... light up whenever we need it to. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and take all of that stuff. Sure. Right. Oh, actually, I didn't see a bush up here. Is there a bush up here? There is a bush up here. Okay. So we fought one little wolf, which isn't a big deal. But like you've seen your share of action, what do you do before you come out here? Uh, let's see, what do we want to say? You used to go on adventures and expeditions, whatever paid. Or should we tell her that we were a mercenary? Yeah, she's a mercenary, she'll understand. Yeah? How's it happening to come here? Let's see. Hmm. That is the timer. But we'll continue this. How's it you happen to come here? Once this is over, I'll win the episode and then we'll... I'll just pick it right back up in the next one, so... Never have much, never been much good at anything else, but I go where there's work that pays. Got a lot of debt to someone you don't want to be in debt to. Have to pay it off somehow. Or, let's just say... Hmm. Never been much good at anything else. You already can't survive. What else can be expected? What else can someone be expected to do? Reason or surroundings. It's been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Lord Radrick's offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. You here to settle? Like the rest of what? Let's see. Haven't given it much thought. No harm in that. Might as well see the place first. So you must have some other plan in mind for coming this way? Mmm. She's a mercenary. Probably won't be falling in love. <laughs> Um, so what should we do? Probably the same things I did before. Looking for some adventure, really. Getting into trouble, I expect. <laughs> I'm going to find some new friends. Um, probably the same things I did before. Just the scenery will be new then. Sometimes it's all that's needed. Anyway, I'm wasting time here. Odimo, give me an earful. Let's be on our way. Yeah, we'll just go back to camp. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath that Sparfell's getting you water anytime soon. He does what he feels like when he feels like it. We should check up on him first. Just slap him around a little. <laughs> Streams down that way. Come on, let's get you that. Let's get you your water. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to end this episode here and stop the recording but I'm going to start the recording right back so that the second episode of this will basically 
be like uploaded right after this one so you guys don't miss much. Um, plus I'm having a lot of fun with games so I don't really want to stop. So hopefully I will see you in the very next episode very shortly.